G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going to use some Elmer's School Glue. Uh, only because I've got some and I know a lot of people, usually just in Australia, but a lot of people can't get the Elmer's Glue All. So let's have a go with the School Glue and see how it performs. What I did notice when I poured it into my big squeeze bottle is it's a lot thicker than the Elmer's glue all but I've mixed it the same just for the uh, the purpose of this little experiment so 70% Elmer's school glue 30% water excuse my dirty gloves recycling <laughs> so that's it there and gave it a good shake up right um, and then I've started my paints at 50-50 so 50% pouring medium, 50% paint. The navy blue, I did add a little bit of extra water to it. Uh, yeah, that was the only one. The others are all 50-50. So I've got one, two, three, four, five colors. 50 grams pouring medium, 50 grams of paint is 100 grams. I put an extra 20 grams of pouring medium and 20 grams of paint with this pink one. Um, I just want a little bit more of the pale colours to, to show through. So it's a lot thicker. Um, I think I can probably show you on this one a bit easier. I'll climb up on my ladder and show you. So it is thicker than I would normally use. See the big mound it's leaving there? It's quite a big mound on a mound, isn't it? Leaves a ribbon. I'm trying not to get into the, the shadows there. But you can see how big that mound is. I'm lifting the stick about an inch from the surface. So, big mound on a mound. And we'll see how it goes. It'd be interesting to see whether or not the school glue can actually handle being a thicker mix and stretch or whether it will just break. So. Let's have a look. Uh, and for cells, I'm going to use the treadmill silicone, the spot on. Um, I get this one from eBay. I think it comes from it comes from overseas in the states. And yes, it, postage is expensive, but one bottle is going to last you years. So don't stress too much about the cost of it. If it's what you need, then it's what you need. Three drops in each. And I'll put four in this pink because I've got more of the pink. One, two, three. There we go. So no black and white again in this pour. I've been enjoying pouring without black and white. The white usually uh, splits, you know, if it's too thick. So I haven't had to worry about that with the last few pours because I haven't used any white. Although, I know the yellow splits too if it's a bit thick, so it's the primary colours that do it and the white that can split if they are too thick. They kind of look curdled and fuzzy. You don't get a, a really nice defined ring around your cells. It's kind of like a just more fuzzy outline and that tells you that your mix is too thick if that's happening to you. Two cups. This is my practice card. I don't want to waste a canvas because I don't know how this is all going to work. So let's just do a card. 30 by 40 centimeter, 12 by 16 inch. I'll do two layers. I'll spread my cups as usual with some silicone oil just to help the all oh, paint release. Now I'm hoping that I'll have a little bit of this pale pink at the end as well. So two layers of everything and then finish with an extra layer of the pink, hopefully. So dark light, dark light with my colors. Sitting on top nicely. I feel really creamy, beautiful these paints. I think I've used the Elmer's School Glue once before 
and I did oranges and blues and yellows and red I think from memory um, I'm supposed to use all this aren't I in my oh, it doesn't matter um, yeah so I don't know where it is at the moment where is it where is it where is it I uh, can't see it I just want to show it to you but anyway I've used the Elmer's school glue once before and I was really happy with the results so I'll give it another go I'll, I'll try it a few more times I won't give up on it just yet it's easily accessible here in Australia you can get it at spotlight the only issue I guess with it is it's what they call washable which means once the paint's dry you can still wash it off. Oh, pick it up. Um, there. It says washable. So if you're the sort of person that wants to wash your silicone off before you varnish it, then this is probably not the right product for you. I don't tend to wash my silicone off. If I'm going to do a, a gloss varnish on it, I'll just gently wipe with a, a paper towel or a tissue to get the excess oil off. I won't actually wash it. And then I just pour on some uh, gloss pouring medium, uh, global gloss medium. There's global gloss medium and varnish, Liquitex gloss varnish. I found that I don't have to um, wash the silicone off I just pour straight over it give it a week and then pour straight over it so that'll be fine with a washable glue I'm not going to wash the paint so I don't think it's a problem for me anyway if, if you want a resin then yes you have to wash all your silicone off really really well with dish soap and water and in which case don't use a washable paint simple isn't it? <laughs> I've got a little bit of this plum left as well, so let's just pop a tiny little bit of that on as well. After the pink. Must have used smaller layers of that plum. There we go. I'm excited. I wonder how it's going to go. I hope it's going to turn out nice. Finish off this. Lovely colour this one. I make this myself. Magenta and purple. Yum yum. Good enough to eat. Right, let's flip those over and then I'll show you the colours. I'm not going to do a flip and drag, I'm just going to do a flip. Oh, lots of purple. Hope that's not going to be how it's turning out, all purple. I probably needed another light colour, I probably needed some more of that because I've got a lot of dark colours. See, there's this one, and this one, and this one. They're all dark, aren't they? And I've only got the two others to lighten it. That's my deep space my navy blue that's my dioxazine purple and that's my plum that I've made and then we've got the two lighter ones peacock which is an aqua and then this pale pink it's called peony pink so hopefully those two light colors will be enough to lighten it I basically want the light colors to come up and surround the cells or I want this the light colors to be the cells and the dark colors to surround them so we'll see how it works. If I'm not happy with this, if it's too dark, then I will maybe reduce the two, reduce those three lighter, uh, darker ones, maybe make them 40 grams, 40 grams, and then increase the lighter ones to 70 grams each or something like that. See how that works. But I guess it's gonna be quite purple because pink and blue makes purple. And then I've got purple, 
and then I've got plum so I've got a lot of purple tones in here which is fine I like purple it's just basically an experiment to see what the glue is going to do how it's going to hold the cells as I said hopefully it's strong enough to hold my cells and I can stretch them nicely because it's really quite a thick mix let's do it See what this has done here. Because when I've dragged the cup, I've got those lines, and those lines are going to turn into long, wormy cells. So I'm not going to use that. Hopefully I've got enough paint on here just to, to flip it over and tilt. Okay. Don't think I want to put any more on. Wow, look at the cells. Very nice. I don't mind having paint on the corners as long as um, they haven't got the, the already stretched cells in. This one had the, those long stretchy cells in them. I could see that they were going to turn into worms. So get rid of it. Well, this one's more purple, isn't it? And this one's more blue. Exactly the same paints in them. Now let's torch and I will be quite reserved in the torching because I'm not sure how reactive the school glue is. So up high, round and round. You can see it just hitting the surface and it kind of makes those little specks. Do you see that? It only just touched there. And there you can I think it's popping bubbles actually. I probably should have made it up earlier and let it sit. It's, you can see all those little dots that it's as the torch hits the surface you get that mass of little dots um, hopefully they will turn into cells or they could just be it looks as if they're more like air bubbles that are popping so I'll give it a minute and then I'll go over it again with the torch maybe a little bit closer to actually get some cells up because I, I think, as I said, they were just air bubbles. Because they haven't really done anything else, have they? They're just sort of staying there. All right, let's go again. A little bit closer, round and round. Hopefully this is enough to bring the cells up. The mix is really thick. So it's going to take a lot of heat for that oil to rise to the surface because it's got to go through a lot of thick paint. So there's quite a bit of sellage happening there. Sellage. <laughs> but they are gorgeous. So they've got the pink, pale pink rings around them. This here looks like grey, almost white. Go figure. All right, I need some more through here. Let's go slow. Not sure what it's going to do yet. You can always add more cells, can't you? But once you've over torched, that's it. You, there's no going back. So just take it slow. I'm going to have to use my stick to catch some paint off the sides because I need to cover this. This is a big area here that needs covering. I think that's enough. Maybe just there. Yeah, I think next time I should probably wait a bit until all the bubbles have subsided because I could see in my cups when they were sitting there that there was a lot of bubbles in there, a lot of froth. So I probably need to wait until those have subsided before I do a pour. But I didn't want to wait until I was too excited. I just wanted to pour. Righto. I'm going to hold that there. I'm going to hold this up here too so I don't lose it. So I'm going to go, try and go that way first, get this paint to cover some of that, and we'll cover that 
I don't want to lose all this paint off the side so I'm going to have to hang on to it. I need to just go over that corner there, come back a bit. Look at these dark plum ones. Wish I had more of those with the pink around them. Okay, now let's do this side as well. Looks as if I've got a lot of paint on here, you guys. Only had, oh, I had a bit over 500 grams, not a lot. That's not a, a lot of paint. Come back, come back into the middle. Okay. Now, this is where my card comes in handy because I can open this up and I'm going to go back over there just a bit, just a touch, like so. Get rid of that paint. I don't really like those pink ones there on the corner. Don't know if I can get all the way over there again. Let's have a look. No, I've left one, one lonely pink cell. It seems to be stretching really well. There's no hazy cells, there's no split paint. Let's go the other way. Um, this is a bit concertina in the middle, so I need to open this up. And I can do that easily. I can just bend the card, let the paint run down, and down towards you a bit at the same time, but it really does need to be opened up there a bit. So I can get over that, over those corners while I'm holding it like this. Okay, so that's done. Oh, these have stretched. Look at that. Okay, those have stretched. I probably got rid of way too much paint. Look at all that. I did get rid of a lot of paint. My bad. Yeah, I probably got rid of too much of it to begin with. So it's really stretched out. That's okay, it's just a little card. I can go again. Now I'm going to have to tilt it even more to get that last little section covered. And I'm going to lose even more paint now. Back and forth, back and forth. Straight over. Okay, that's done. Come back. I don't like how there's a stripe down the center. Now I'm going to see if I can just bring all this down and try and get rid of some of this elongated stuff down here. I think it's pretty good for a first start, first go. Um, yeah, just a little bit, a bit overstretched. I shouldn't have tipped all that off to begin with. That was not a good idea. Right, uh, let's torch a bit over here where it's all stretched and blurry. Um, yeah, not really, not really liking this. The cells have grown nicely. They've stretched nicely. As I said, nothing's broken. Um, I just tipped too much paint off so it's overstretched. I'm going to get my balloon and do some dips. All is not lost. Let me grab my balloon. Or my glove actually. I like using gloves. 
because they're nice and soft and squishy. Well used glove. So it's nice and soft and squishy. Right, oh, let's start over here where we actually you know what I'll do is I want to torch some more because if I get some cells up, then I can turn those cells into petals in my in my dip. So let's over torch and get some lots of cells up because that will just help in the petal design. Okay, here we go. A lot of paint there. Oh, I need to get my paper towel. One sec. Get my piece of paper towel down here. So I can dip the balloon straight into it. Like so. Go again in that one, just because the paint is thick and there's a lot of paint on the surface, so I need to probably dip twice. All right, let's do this corner as well, because this is not an attractive corner. Oh, the petals are pretty though. I don't think I even want to dip again. No, I will, because there's too much paint left on there. I've got bigger. Push down further which means it splats the paint out further, brings up more from the bottom, and kind of pushes it out so you don't tend to get such a big, thick section in the middle. Let's push that one right down as well. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll do the four corners first. Sounds like a TV program, doesn't it? Four corners. Oh, look, I left the, put the finger in it. Didn't lift my little finger up. I should be doing this, holding my little finger up. I didn't do it. Dear oh dear. Oh, that one's pretty. Look at the turquoise coming through. Now we'll go in this corner because this corner, again, is not attractive. So I'll go over each twice. Get rid of some excess paint. Fold that in half and I can use the other side. I can't believe my little finger dipped into it. My little glove finger. Okay. Uh, now I'm just going to do two more. I'll do one there and then one there just to sort of balance it out a bit. So I'll come in a little bit from the, the bottom. One there. And then I'll do those two again. Pick up a little bit more paint. Push down as far as I can go. Same with this one. Push down as far as I can. These are so pretty, you guys. I like them all, except maybe not so much that one. I wonder if I can go over them again. If you keep going over them, though, you, you run the risk of um, getting a bald canvas if you take too much paint off. All right. That will do. What do you think? I think I've saved it. Now we must stop balloon dipping. I think we're doing it too much. We're overdoing it. Well, I am anyway. You think, oh, I'll save it. Now, yes, it adds a bit of interest, but sometimes it's nice just to have a plain pour, hey? Don't want to overdo everything. So there we go. Uh, I will, I'll do this again, I'll do the same colours, happy with the colours, can't really see much of this plum, I might reduce the dioxys in purple because it's very dominant, reduce the diox and add a little bit of extra plum mm. and see how that goes. Alright, I'll take my, take my gloves off, take you in for a close up. 
But overall, yep, happy with the school glue. Right, let's take you down and you can have a look at the, the sellage. <laughs> Is that a word? Sellage? I don't know. Colours don't look as bright down here as they do from where I am. Come around this way. Mm, no, pink doesn't look as pink. It kind of looks more white in the photo for some reason when I'm looking through my screen. Okay, let's have a look down here at this corner. We're focusing. Come on, focus. Mm, there we go. Pretty flower. So my cells are a little bit out of shape. When they started, they were really cute. Look at those little guys there. Really cute. Um, but I did overstretch them. So my bad. Tip too much paint off to begin with. Lots here. It's quite reactive, isn't it? Those are the ones that I torched afterwards and I got up all those little ones. So it seems to be quite reactive. So yeah, colours are pretty. As I said, I'll just I'll go again, I'll reduce the dioxazine purple, add a bit more of the plum, and not tilt half the paint off to begin with. I needed it. I only had 500 grams. I needed it all. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.